Up to now, I've been using an array or an array list to store the rooms in my game map. In other words, a linear list of rooms with the first room at index 0. This has the advantage of simplicity, but it has the disadvantage of obscurity. That's because when one room has an exit to another room, the exit takes the form of a number like this, 0 or 2 or 3, with minus 1 meaning no exit. These numbers are the indexes into the map array. The only way to figure out which room is at any exit is to count through the array to find which room is at the specific index. Now that's all very well in a game like this with just four rooms, but in a big game with tens or maybe hundreds of rooms, that will soon be very, very confusing. In the next few minutes, I'll show you one way of making this a lot clearer. I'm Hugh, this is a lesson in my complete adventure game programming course, and in this lesson I'll explain dictionaries. A dictionary is a list of paired items. The first item in each pair is a key. The second item is a value. In an array we find an element using an index, that is, the numerical position of an element in the array. In a dictionary we find an element using its key. Now that's just like in a real life dictionary. When I want to find the definition of dog, I look up the word dog. I flick through the pages of the dictionary until I find the entry matching dog. So here the word dog would be the key. And the dictionary tells me dog is a four-legged animal that woofs. Now I look up cat and the dictionary tells me cat is a four-legged animal that doesn't woof. Now here, dog and cat are both keys. I use the keys to find the definitions. The definitions are the values. In a program, if I have an array of animal definitions, I can iterate through the array by counting through the indexes in a for loop, like this. Now with a dictionary, I can move through the elements using a for each loop, like this. And in C sharp, I can use the key and value properties to show all the keys and values. When I want to find the definition of a cat in an array, I would need to know the position, the array index, of the correct definition, and then index into the array with a number. In C sharp, I'd do it like this. But with a dictionary, I could use animal names as the keys. So when I want to find the definition of dog, I would enter the name dog, and that would return the associated value, which here is the definition of dog. And notice that the key itself also provides information, because unlike a numerical index, the key, which in this case is the name of an animal, gives me information that is immediately meaningful. I can display the key, cat, along with its definition, which is useful. Displaying the index number in an array is not so useful. Even with a simple example like this, you can probably already see how much clearer the dictionary is. If I had an array of a thousand definitions and I wanted to find a specific definition, I'd have to remember the correct index of that definition. But how am I supposed to remember if the definition of cat is at index 56 or index 556 or 753 or at any other of those thousand positions in the array? But with a dictionary, I only have to remember the key. Here, that's the name of the animal I'm looking for. I enter the key cat to find the definition of cat. I enter the key dog to find the definition of dog, and so on. You can probably already imagine how much clearer the exits of the rooms in my games would be using keys into a dictionary instead of indexes into an array. Instead of the number 2 representing an exit to the cave, I enter the name cave, and I can now look at the map, the dictionary of rooms, and immediately see the connections between them. The cave leads north to the troll room, the troll room leads east to the forest, and so on. Incidentally, for the benefit of Java programmers, here's a short program to illustrate the basics of using the Java hash map, which is, I think, about the closest equivalent of a C-sharp dictionary. I won't go over all the syntax here. If it's unfamiliar, there are lots of places online that will explain it. But in essence, I create a hash map object, and I call put to add key value pairs to it. Here I add strings as keys and rooms as values. Here is a simple example of iterating over the dictionary with a for loop. And I can get the value using the key like this. If the key is found, I get the value, which is a room object, 
and call its get description method. But before I do that, I check if there is a matching key using the contains key method. That returns true if the key is found, false otherwise. If the key isn't found, I display an error message. For example, if I accidentally enter a lowercase c for cave, the key won't be found because the key cave in my map has an uppercase c. Now that illustrates a problem with using strings as keys. It's very easy to make mistakes when entering a string. In the next lesson, I'll show one simple way of avoiding those types of errors. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already subscribed, do so now and click the little bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload new lessons.